Hi, my name is uh, Alessandro Gavaldi and I am a PhD student from the University of Milano Bicocca. And today I'm going to talk about uh, NNLO QCD event generation for Z boson pair production matched to a parton shower. So let's begin with uh, a couple of uh, questions. Uh, so why should we study the boson production? And uh, do, we, do we really need to push our calculations to NNLO accuracy? So the, the answer to the first question is uh, uh, we, we should indeed study the boson production because it is an uh, interesting process from the phenomenological point of view since it uh, allows uh, for precision studies of the electric interactions with the aim of looking for some possible new physics. And uh, we, we need also to push our calculations to NNLO accuracy because uh, we, we need to keep uh, the theoretical uncertainties smaller than the statistical errors provided by experiments. Uh, so studying uh, the boson production at the LHC is really the study of a proton-proton scattering process with four final state leptons. And in this talk uh, in particular, I will focus uh, on the case where the exchanged uh, bosons are either Z bosons or off-shell photons, gamma star. And in, in order to uh, keep uh, the definition of the cross section finite, we will uh, impose uh, a minimum and a maximum value for the um, mass of each boson. The entire calculation has been implemented within the Geneva framework in order to obtain a fully differential results uh, up to next to next to leading order and uh, an NLL prime resummation of the zero jettiness uh, tau zero spectrum. We will see in the next few slides what zero jetness is. And uh, in the end, we will also be able to match uh, our generated events to a parton shower. So let's begin with a very brief uh, uh, explanation of the Geneva approach. So in, in order to generate events within Geneva, we need to uh, divide the entire phase space into three regions with zero, one, and two resolved partners, respectively. And in order to do that, we will make use of two so-called resolution parameters, which we will take to be zero and one jetness. Broadly speaking, one can think of zero and one jetness as two parameters that uh, uh, tell us uh, how close uh, a configuration is from being a zero or one part configuration. Just to give an example, uh, if we consider a matrix element evaluated at a phase space point with one final state part, uh, this, uh, that matrix element will contribute to uh, the generation of uh, one final state part event in Geneva only if its zero jettiness will be above a certain threshold, which we will call a tau zero cut. While if it is below, we will consider the final state pattern not to be resolved. And uh, uh, that contribution will uh, contribute to the generation of zero pattern events. Let's now give uh, a more precise uh, definition of what uh, zero jetness is. Uh, as we can see from the second equation from this slide, zero jetness is defined as a sum over the um, final state patterns. So that uh, we can immediately see that uh, phase space points with no final state patterns will have, uh, by definition, tau zero equal to zero. Um, the terms appearing in the sum are um, basically a scalar product between the momentum of the final state pattern and one of the momenta of the initial state patterns. So that 
any uh, final state part, which is soft or almost collinear to the beam, will give uh, a small contribution to that sum, thus leading to a small value of tau zero. So this was uh, about uh, the uh, division of the phase space uh, into regions, but uh, let's now see how the uh, Geneva differential cross-section is, is defined. In this slide, we see the definition for the zero jet exclusive differential cross-section, which will take uh, contributions from the phase space points uh, whose zero jettiness is below tau zero cap. And we, we want uh, this uh, cross-section to be both uh, NNLO accurate and resummed up to an NLL prime precision in tau zero. In order to make it uh, satisfy these two properties, we adopt uh, an additive approach by basically adding the um, cross-section coming from resummation to the one coming from a fixed order calculation. And uh, um, in order not to double count, we need uh, then to subtract the expansion of the first term up to all the alpha s squared. We observe that these last two terms are separately divergent when tau zero cut approaches zero, but their difference is not. Um, in principle, we want to keep tau zero cut as small as possible to minimize the power corrections, but we also have to um, avoid um, these uh, contributions from becoming too big. A same reasoning apply, a similar reasoning applies for the one jet inclusive differential cross section, but uh, this time we have to deal with uh, the fact that uh, the resumed contribution to this cross section is only differential in uh, tau zero. And so we need to multiply it by a normalized splitting probability P, which will give it uh, the dependence on the two additional parameters, uh, Z and phi, that we need to parameterize uh, the extra emission of the phase space phi one. Let's now come to the final results. In this uh, plot here, we can see the distribution of uh, tau zero before and after the parallel shower and the hadronization provided by PTA8. And in uh, the blue curve is the partonic distribution given by Geneva. And uh, we, we know that it is uh, an NLL prime plus and then low accurate, while the yellow and green curves are those obtained after Palton shower and the hadronization, respectively. Uh, we, we know that uh, both Palton shower and the hadronization do not preserve the NNLL prime precision, so we need to check numerically either their effect is big or small. And indeed, we can see that the Palton shower effect is quite small over most of the tau zero range. But this is not the case for hadronization, which has instead a quite big effect, especially in the small tau zero region. These finally are some comparisons with the data. These data come from the Atlas experiment, while these ones come from the CMS experiment. And we can see overall a quite good agreement between our theoretical predictions and data. Before ending this talk, I would just like to give some additional information on uh, um, the implementation of this uh, process. Uh, all the zero and one loop matrix elements used have been taken from the loops, while the two loop virtual contribution has been uh, implemented within, within Geneva, starting from the public code QBBAMP. The entire code is available upon request to the authors and will be made public in a future release of Geneva. So that was all. Thanks for your attention.